Today is the 22nd anniversary of John Swart's passing. He was the founder of our monastery. We have a big debt to him. I like to think that we try to repay that debt every day. But when events like this come around, it's good to stop and think. What were some of the teachings he left behind? Some of the teachings were with his manners. He was a very gentle person, but very solid. One time he told a group of people up in the temple in Ontario, they were concerned that the income of the temple had fallen since he'd left. He said, you know, I don't care. All I care about is that the monks and the lay people are, are practicing properly. That was the end of that discussion. The next day he turned to me, or after the man turned to me, and he said, you know, I don't like using strong language like that. Like everything strong, where? But it gives you a sense of how gentle he'd like to be. But he was very firm. There was another time when a monk came up here, a monk who had a very dubious history. And he brought a lot of lay people along, hoping that a John Swart wouldn't say anything in front of the lay people. But John Swart immediately asked him about a, an issue that he had had. There was an accusation against him. I had sex with two women. He said, when is this issue ever going to get settled? And the monk said, well, I tried to get it settled, but he couldn't even finish the sentence. And John Swartz said, if you really wanted it to be settled, it would have been settled a long time ago. In my eyes, you're not a monk. So he could be really firm when he had to be, but he saw that it was necessary. What this means is that as a practitioner, you don't just adopt one attitude all the time or take one persona all the time. You try to see what's appropriate for the occasion. And his case was a sense of when he had to come down strong, and what his idea of strong was, and when he could be more gentle. So think about that. It's the same principle with right effort all across the board. There are times when the effort has to be gentle, and other times when it has to be strong. We can't say we're just doing middling effort. The effort has to be appropriate for the occasion. We have to make our words also appropriate for the occasion. We have to be very careful about what we do, say, and think to make sure that it's just right. He liked to make the comment that the Buddha says a lot of things are not self. Form is not self. Feelings are not self. Perceptions, thought fabrications, consciousness, all not self. But then he said, notice that the Buddha goes on to say, you have our actions as your own. When you choose to do an action, that's your responsibility. And you want to fully take on that responsibility, be alive to that. You don't pass it off and say, well, it's because somebody else made me do it or because I felt pushed by other people, or that was just the way things were at that time. You're responsible for your actions. Once they're done, then the results are going to come back at you, and that's not self. That's beyond your control. But what is, un is under your control is something you should pay very careful attention to. Make sure you do it right. We have this chance with each moment to do something skillful. Even if it's just focusing on a breath as it comes in and goes out, being mindful, being alert. And just try to be skillful every breath, in and out, in and out. Alert with every breath. Now you take this power that you have and you put it to good use. We feel that John Swat put his power of action to good use. And one of those, of course, was that he, at his late age in life, decided to set up a forest monastery where people from all races and all nationalities could come and practice. It wasn't easy. So we should have some gratitude for that and try to practice as best we can, taking responsibility for our thoughts and our words and our deeds, learning from his example, and trying to make it our own.